VTech just kicked in, yo! Oh god! In the late 90s and early 2000s, the import scene was super hot, and it seemed like Civic. S2000 and Integra GSR drivers all wanted to make sure everybody knew that their cars had VTEC. So what are they even talking about? And what's kicking in when? VTEC stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control. It was invented by Honda engineer Ikuo Kajitani in the late 80s, and it's an ingenious way to make an engine more fuel efficient and more powerful. But those are opposites. How does VTEC do that? Let's brush up on some engine basics about how air gets in and out of the cylinders. So there's a head sitting on top of the engine block and all of the air needs to flow through it. As the piston goes up and down, it sucks air in and pushes it out through intake and exhaust ports in the head. There's these valves opening and closing those ports like tiny lids constantly popping off and slamming back down again. In an engine running at 4,000 RPM, the valves open and close 2,000 times a minute. A spin the spinning camshaft controls the action and timing of the valve. There's cam lobes all along the length of the shaft. When we say cams, what we're really talking about are the lobes. As the shaft rotates, the cams bump into things that bump into the valve. Different engines use different things for that, sometimes push rods, rocker arms, or hydraulic lifters. Some engines use a single camshaft to control all of the intake and exhaust valves, while others use separate camshafts for each set of valves, single cam versus dual cam. The exact shape of the cam determines when the valves open, how much they open, and when they close. For lots of complicated reasons, that camshaft can totally change the personality of an engine. Imagine we're running an engine extremely slowly, like 10 or 20 revolutions a minute. That's impossible! But at this slow speed, we'd want cam lobes shaped so that just as the piston starts moving downward in the intake stroke, the intake valve would open. Then, the intake valve would close right as the piston bottoms out. When the cylinder's full of air, the compression stroke would happen, and at the end of this, the exhaust valve would open with the piston at bottom dead center, and it would close after the exhaust stroke. But that's not what happens in an engine, because the RPMs are in the thousands. The air's got momentum, and there's a lot of other things going on that screw with the air coming in and getting out that help the engine run. Leaving valves open longer helps them maximize the intake of fresh air and the expulsion of exhaust. In earlier days, there's really only one possible cam profile. They threw in a camshaft with a certain size cam lobes on it. That got driven by the crankshaft, and that was that. But the cams that make the best valve timing and lift for slow speed driving and good fuel economy, well, they're horrible for making horsepower and going fast. Specially designed racing cams are big, and they open these valves sooner, close them later, than small cams would. We saw in the turbo and nitrous episodes that getting more oxygen in the engine makes more power. That little bit of extra hang time gets in as much air as possible and allows the cylinders to burn more gas and make more power. So big cams work really well at high RPM, but they run like crap at slow speed. The tricks used to shove lots of air and fuel in at high RPM are counterproductive at low RPM. That causes messy, inconsistent air and fuel delivery. You know that lopy idle that you hear from cool cars? That's because that car's got big cams. Fuel efficient engine has small cans, so the valves open just long enough to get adequate power to get the car going. That sounds disgusting. They're limiting the amount of air into the cylinder, so they also limit how much gas it needs to burn. This is all fine at low rev, but when the RPMs start to rise, you're not able to get a whole lot of air. So that's why cars built for good fuel economy are slow. <laughs> Whoa. Most people aren't racing anyway, so car makers usually settle on cam sizes somewhere in the middle. You could call that a camp promise. <laughs> okay. This is where VTEC kicks in. Honda figured out how to run a second cam lobe profile. Basically, it's a fancy set of cams that gives you the best of both worlds, fuel efficiency and power from the same engine. If cams determine an engine's personality, VTEC has a multiple personality disorder.
Jupiter. The Japanese market Integra came out with VTEC in 1989, and it first appeared in the US in 1991 on the Acura NSX. Japan taxes engines based on displacement, so it made sense in Japan for automakers to think of new ways to make efficient little engines that could still pack horsepower. Here's how it works. Honda uses dual overhead cams, and in a VTEC engine, larger cam lobes sit between the normal sized ones on the intake camshaft. Rocker arms are the middlemen between the cams and the valve. As the camshaft rotates, all the cams are bumping up the rocker arms. At low and mid-range RPMs, the rockers that pair with the standard cams are the only ones actually moving the valve. The bigger cams rockers aren't connected to any valve. They're basically flapping in the wind. So as you're cruising at 25 in a school zone, the engine runs frugally using the moderate valve timing set by standard cam. When you hit the freeway on-ramp and your right foot starts feeling heavy, you want bigger cams and more horsepower. The car's computer has been keeping tabs on everything. And when it sees the right combination of engine oil pressure, engine temperature, engine speed, and throttle position, it decides to grant your wish. VTEC is go! Ah! The ECU shoots a signal to a solenoid control valve that pushes the hydraulic pin through normal cams rockers and into the big cams rocker. This locks those previously independent rockers together, and when the big cams hit, they push all the rockers down and take over the valve control. Now, the normal cams are the do-nothing slackers, while the bigger cams start opening the intake valve sooner, opening them further, and closing them later. Suddenly, you've got more air and more power! When you let off the gas a bit and the computer decides you don't need the extra grunt anymore, the hydraulic pins retract to let the rockers uncouple and the engine goes back to running on the small cam and just sipping fuel. And now they have iVTEC, which combines multiple cam sizes with continuously variable valve timing for even more performance. Amazing! I was sleeping down there. I'm a bunny. Guys, dudes, guys, dudes, smash the subscribe button. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. I know you like learning, and if you like learning, you'll love Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. You wanna know how we did this? Or I was trying! then you can learn video editing with Premiere Pro, with Jordi Vandeput, along with 6,500 others. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics. So you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. I've got that right here in my pants. And what's even better is that the first thousand people to sign up with the link in the description get the first two months for free. So go to skl.sh slash sciencegarage2 or click on the link in the description. Go get skilled. Skillshare. The more people who subscribe to Donut, the more cool videos we get to do. You can follow me at BidsBardo. You can follow Donut at Donut Media. You want to learn more about getting air in an engine? Check out this video on turbos. You like VTEC? Check out the up to speed on the S2000. Don't tell my wife about cam timing.